Hi, welcome to Copenhagen. Thanks for dropping in. Hope everybody is doing well. Today I am going to frame my latest custom diamond painting. So this is the Hoverfly, uh, a custom diamond painting that I just finished a few days ago and I'm now going to frame it. Uh, at the beginning I used to frame all of my diamond paintings uh, in frames with glass and the idea is that the glass uh, stops dust building up on the drills. After doing that a few times I realised that uh, the glass is actually a hindrance because during daytime if you have any light from a window shining in the glass acts like a mirror and you don't really see the diamond painting at its best. So I tested uh, magnetic frames, which is what this is, uh, and I, I do have another video, uh, which I will post up here. And um, I've had one hanging up for a few months now, and it still looks perfectly fine. So it looks better, you can see the drills better, you can take pictures without having reflections in the picture. Uh, so I prefer it for that reason. The other reason is cost. Uh, anybody who has uh, paid to get one framed when you have these custom sizes, I mean this one is pretty big, but I do have one that was even bigger. Um, the frame costs quite a bit of money and it only fits that diamond painting. So. Magnetic frames um, are more cost effective by far. So what you can do is put your picture in the magnetic frame and then when you decide to swap it out, just take the picture out, put a new one in. So you might need to get different sizes of frames um, to fit different sizes of pictures so you don't have a massive overlap either side. Um, so that's the way that I've decided to do it. So. I have a large portfolio uh, case, folder, bag, whatever you want to call it, and all of the completed diamond paintings are in there. So it's just a matter of uh, when I decide to swap out a picture, I just pull out the one that I want to put up, find the frame that's the, the proper size for it, and then uh, hang it up. So that's the way that I do it. I've decided uh, I'm not going to do the, the frames with glass any longer. Too expensive and they don't really show off the diamond painting. So today I'm going to frame this one, I'll show you how I do it. Um, this is how the diamond, the picture was taken. This is a hoverfly uh, that I took a picture of in the botanical gardens in Copenhagen. I was actually just taking a picture of the flower. The hoverfly landed just as I went to take the picture. So I got the hoverfly and a few years later uh, decided to turn it into a diamond painting. So I came up with this design. Uh, I am very pleased with it. So now it is time to frame. Now this is the way that I took the picture. Uh, you can see the key, 90 colours. But when I was working on the picture I decided I actually prefer it this way. So if you've been watching uh, on Instagram this is the picture that you've seen gradually build up. So I've decided I want it this way and not uh, the way the picture was actually taken. So the first thing that I do uh, before I frame them is roll the drills to press them into the canvas, make sure that they're all down. I now use one of these uh, small rollers. It's got a, a rubber roller on it. I find it really handy it wasn't. I bought it more out of a, more as a curiosity because up until I got this, I was using a normal kitchen rolling pin, like the big wooden rolling pin. I would wait until I was finished the diamond painting, put a, a tea towel on top, and then roll it all over to press the drills in, which definitely works. But what I've started doing now is I, I work section by section with uh, rectangles of release paper. And this little roller is nearly exactly the same width. So what I do is when I do a section, I roll it to press the drills in and I do that. But at the end, 
I'll roll the whole thing. So that's what I'm going to do now. So all I'm doing is just making sure the drills are seated properly. Any that might be popping up are getting pushed back down. So this will push the drills into place. So just a matter of going over the whole picture. Just giving a decent pressure on it. Okay, so that's that done. The next thing I want to do is take off the sides that uh, the frame doesn't fit on. So these frames will be going on the top and the bottom. So well, the first thing that I want to do is take off the sides. So pretty simple, just a pair of scissors and cut as close to the drills as possible. because I don't really want to see the white of the canvas at the sides. Some people may choose to leave that on, but I personally, I think it looks better with the black bars and nothing at the sides. So just uh, cutting along as close as I can to the sides of the drills. Obviously, now that I've done this, I can't change my mind on the orientation because uh, if I turn it back the other way, I've got nothing to put the magnetic frame on. Okay, nearly there. Just want to make sure I get this straight. that's one side done. Move for the other side. I've actually started another custom, uh, the same sort of style and it's a picture of the entrance to Tivoli in Copenhagen. Tivoli is the second oldest amusement park in the world and a certain Mr. Walt Disney visited Tivoli a few times uh, before he came up with the idea of starting his own amusement park. So it's a, a really nice place to go. Um, it's not big, it is pretty small. But it is laid out very well. They have areas uh, where people who want to do the, the rides 
can go and uh, they have all the arcades and all that sort of thing in one area. And then they have um, an area that's uh, it's all flowers and seats and benches where people can just sit and relax. You can wander around with a beer. If you buy a beer, you can uh, wander around with it. They don't have any restrictions about taking alcohol um, out of the, the place where you purchase it. They have a large stage where they have live music. They have a small bandstand uh, where they play jazz, live jazz music during the summer. They have an aquarium. And they have a kiddies corner where all the really young kids can go. Uh, small amusement rides for them. It's a really nice place. Uh, I'll trim that up a bit later. A bit there. It's just the glue starts to stick to the scissors and then you it's just uh, doesn't cut as clean. So I'll clean the scissors up and uh, trim that a little bit there. But just to get it done. So this is the magnetic frame and all it is is two strips of wood and they have small magnets in each. So when you put them together, they stick. And the idea is that you put your canvas in between them and then put that on, clip, and it holds the canvas. Now, this is pretty big, so um, it is pretty heavy. So I'm going to be interested to see if this will hold um, with just the magnets and no other method of support. I know that some people do glue them in, but once you do that, you can't use your magnetic frame for anything else. So I'm trying to just use one of each size and uh, swap them over. But we'll see what happens with this, if the magnets are strong enough or not. If they're not, I'll, I would glue it in. And then that would be permanent. So it takes a little bit of tweaking to get rid of the, the canvas at the top. But you get the idea, the canvas is now stuck between these pieces of wood uh, by magnets. So if I turn it round, it'll be easier. Just going to have to get the camera high enough uh, to get all of this in. So do this way. Just looking for the drills that are still popping up. So this one, it looks like the border is wider than, yeah, the border is wider than the piece of wood. So what I do is I push the wood up to the side of the drills and I use a marker or a pen and I draw the line and then what, what I do is I trim this. So that I don't have any uh, white sticking up above the frame, it's just sticking to the glue there. So hopefully I can get this cut. Now I'm not actually cutting through glue but there is a bit of glue in the scissors. So just trimming along. Trying to get it as neat as possible. Trying to keep as much canvas as possible under the frame so we get a good grip.
So I do have one hanging on the magnetic frame at the moment and it is pretty big as well. It's the Little Tin Soldier from Diamond Art Club and that has been hanging up for a few months now and haven't had any issues and it's purely the magnets that are holding it up but I didn't glue it or anything so I can swap it out and I can use uh, that magnetic frame for a different one if I want to uh, just this last part done Put that out of the way Put the back side in So you're just sort of visually trying to get them even Might take a little bit of fiddling about until you're happy And then A little, little flake of uh, plastic there you want to make sure that there's nothing on this obviously so uh, the magnets get a good grip and the frame doesn't lift up. So I'm just trying to get it as close as possible. And then the same with this. It takes a little bit of tweaking. So I'll tidy up that a little bit later. Turn it back round. So this is uh, this is how it's going to look with the rope at the top. So the next thing is to actually try it. Hopefully, in the next part. You will see it. So, ta da! There we have it. The diamond painting gem custom of a hoverfly in Copenhagen. Held up by the power of magnets and gorilla glue. It didn't work. As soon as I picked it up, uh, the canvas slid out of the frame. So I had to uh, change the plan and what I did was put some uh, Gorilla Glue along the top of the canvas and stuck the frame to it. So basically that top part is permanent. I can still put it in the portfolio where I keep uh, the ones that have been finished. I can take the bottom section off if I want to make it uh, fit a bit better. Um, Part of the problem was because I turned the picture, it wasn't, uh, it isn't orientated the way that the picture was taken and the way that the custom was printed. I turned it on its side um, because I thought it looked better, I still do, but it meant that the sides were uh, narrower, the canvas that I had um, to play with to put the, the magnets on, on the frame. Um, it was narrower than the original top and bottom. So when I put it together, I think maybe half, maybe three quarters of the magnets were actually connecting on the canvas. And because of that, the, the hold wasn't as strong as it should have been and it slipped out. So as I said, what I did was I glued it and it's fine. Um, the thing is, I'm not 100% sure if it would have held um, if the borders had been bigger um, because they are pretty heavy. Once you start getting to the bigger sizes there is a fair bit of weight in them with all those drills. So not sure uh, if it would have worked if the borders had been full size. But it still worked. Um, it just means I can't swap out. I would need to use a different frame. I still think it looks really nice. Um, it is definitely my favourite custom so far. I have already started another one. Um, so uh, if you check Instagram at uh, Diamond Painting Gym, you'll see what I am working on step by step 
I think it's going to be a couple of weeks before it actually begins to look like something. It is the same style, but a different subject. So that's it. The, uh, the hoverfly is finally framed and I am very pleased with it. So thanks to Smith Speeds. Uh, thanks to Mike for all the help um, deciding on the size and uh, getting it set up. The drills are very, very nice. I actually just posted a picture on Instagram of a close-up of uh, the one that I'm working on now to let people see how tight those square drills are. Uh, they are perfect. So... Um, that is the thing, people talk about round drills, square drills, a lot of people get fed up with the square drills um, and I think a lot of the problem is the actual quality of the drills. So you want to get drills that are good quality, they are square, they don't have any little bits sticking out because that starts to push things and as soon as that happens everything goes to pop. So the quality of the drills is very important. Use the checkerboard technique. Um, again, I do have a video about the checkerboard um, if you want to look through my videos. Um, the checkerboard, patience and good drills, that is the answer to squares. So uh, if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, useful, entertaining, whatever, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Um, you will see other unbaggings, unboxings, comparisons, pens, um, got some new stuff coming up. Anyway, uh, anything to do with diamond painting, uh, please subscribe and hit the notification button. You will also be notified when I go live on YouTube um, because I have started doing YouTube lives where I'll come on and I'm working on whatever project is the current project and basically just chat to people uh, around the world and get to know them. Uh, most people that come in are diamond painters so we do talk about diamond painting but we wander off to any subject really. Um, always interested in meeting people around the world, finding out a little bit about where they live. I'm originally from Scotland, hence the accent. But I moved to Copenhagen, Denmark in 2012 and uh, that was quite an interesting move. Uh, there are a few things that are a bit different in Denmark. But if you drop in on a live, uh, you can maybe uh, ask me about that and uh, I'll, I'll tell you bits and pieces about Denmark. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. In the meantime, take care, be safe and wash your hands.